Hey guys, uh, <clears throat> it's a new day and I'm still trying to go through X uh, before July 4th, but uh, yeah, I wanted to do like 14 chapters the other day and I didn't even get to the 7th one, so I'm starting early today though, let's go through the 7th chapter. This is going to be Stephen's speech in the stoning of Stephen, chapter 7, verse 1, so then said the high priest, are these things so? And... Verse 2 says, And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Sharon, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Sharon. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein he now dwell. So he's gone all the way back to the time of Abraham. When he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set foot on, he yet, yet he promised that he would give it to him for possession, and to his seed after him, when as yet in this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil for four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God, and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcisions, and so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with them. It goes back to, you know, the covenant with Abraham. And going forward, and delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, uh, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, first. <clears throat> and at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph, other Jacob, to him, and all his kindred, threescore and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt, and died he and our fathers, and were carried over and to Sikkim, and laid in the sepulchre that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the fathers of Sikkim. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children, to the end they might not live. In which time Moses was born, and was exceeding fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up, and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended them and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptians. Have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he shewed unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then, Mo then fled Moses at the saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begat, he begat two sons appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in the flame, in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near it, 
behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Well, I was talking about the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, and here we have where he saw the angel of the Lord appeared to him. But then the angel is, you know, it says it's the voice of the Lord, and, and he says that he is the Lord. So that's the reason why we think that the, old, the angel of the Lord, Lord in the Old Testament is Jesus. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out, after that he had shewed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God rise up or raise up unto you, brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Sinai, which is Mount Sinai, but <clears throat> I guess maybe said differently. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of as it is written in the book of the Israel, Have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifice by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacles of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Your fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him in house, howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in the temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your father said, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom he had been of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have not kept it. Okay, there's a lot there. It's like a re retelling of the Old Testament. I mean he talks about Abraham and then Moses and then David, basically. Uh I guess three of the major patriarchs, and um, hmm, yeah, that's, that's a lot to think about there. But he basically ends it with saying, you know, he, he says, you know, God was with his people all along, and, and you know, God made these promises. And uh, and Israel always, uh, you know, there's always there was always parts of Israel that you know rejected God's plans, and 
you know, he basically ends it with, you know, he's rebuking these unbelieving Jews who are there. And, um, because I guess, you know, before, in the previous chapter, Stephen was performing miracles and stuff, and, and the people out it. And, um, so he's telling them, you know, <clears throat> so I don't know. Yeah, he's just he's talking about, you know, the rebellious Israelites in the past and he's saying, you know, you're just like them and you know, you're refusing the Lord, Son of God, so, well, they're going to stone him after that, so, Acts chapter 7, verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and, you know, just thinking about the gnashing of the teeth, you know, obviously that you know, I think Jesus talks about there will be gnashing of teeth in hell. And we see that's related to, you know, they're, they were angry. You know, they wanted to, um, <clears throat> they wanted to kill him. So it's more of an angry thing. <clears throat> it's all Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out, and they cried out with a loud, loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at the young man's feet. The witnesses uh, laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not the sin to their charge. When he had said this, he fell asleep. His death seems very similar to, you know, the crucifixion of Jesus. He says, Lord, you see my spirit. Lord, lay this sin not to their, lay the sin, not, or lay not the sin to their charge. So it's interesting. We get a really beautiful, detailed story about, uh, this disciple, Stephen and how he was appointed by, um, you know, Peter and uh, John, I guess. And then we see Saul come into play. And so, it, you know, it kind of comes around where, you know, later on Saul's going to be converted and become Paul. And so we see how this is kind of all intertwined here. And um, <clears throat> and it makes even, you know, what we read about Saul here makes, you know, his conversion even more spectacular later on. So, I'm sure there's a lot that could be broken down here, but, I mean, there's so much <laughs> that I just have to get going on to the next chapter. Uh, but this is a great chapter. So, let's move on to chapter 8. God bless.